to further look into these particles, you will find that in our everyday life we encounter only a very small subset. That is the proton and the neutron are made of U and D type of quarks. So they are there. The whole material world is made of these. And of course the electrons are there because they make the atoms. And as you heard from D.P. Stock, the neutrinos are everywhere. Because they are not absorbed. They run through, for example, the entire solar atmosphere produced in the core and the point is they are weakly interacting and they do not get absorbed. So once a neutrino fellow is found, it will remain there forever. Except for a small probability that it may change time from electron to muon because of oscillation. But otherwise the neutrinos are there. Now as you will see in our talk, unlike the previous one, the neutrinos are not heroes, but you will find that in some sense they are kind of villains. You will see why. Then how do we get these other particles which are highly unstable, that is after being produced they decay, well loosely speaking we say instantaneously, but how instantaneously just to give you an example, this W, Z and top, the real heavy particles, they decay within into the minus 24, minus 25 seconds. So it is unimaginable. Relatively large lifetime particles are, for example, the muon, a few microseconds into the minus 6. So don't see them. Then how do I know that they are there? Well, because we could produce them in man made experiments, and this is how we know they are. And in fact, this brings us immediately to a very basic question that what are accelerators? Well, as you know, this, I mean, even those who did BSc physics or us know that there are particle accelerators <coughs> which accelerate particles with tremendous. Energies. Now here I am talking about the collision of two protons. First is a fixed target experiment. That is, protons are there in a chunk of matter and a projectile proton comes again in a bunch and they hit the target and the reaction produces particle following Einstein's rule. That is, energy can be converted into mass and therefore this huge energy for example 450 GB this is giga electron volt I am sure after DP stop you are familiar with this kind of units in particle physics giga electron volt is 10 to the 9 electron volts and the energy of this converts into may convert into new particle masses this is just like heat converting into mechanical energy and so on. But hold on for a second. You will find that although you have this huge energy, this one is of course at rest. This is called a fixed target experiment. This 450 <coughs> GB cannot be used to produce a 450 GB particle. Again the reason is simple because this guy has momentum. In fact tremendous momentum. It's a proton is at 450 GB, it is running close to the velocity of light and therefore the produced particle also has momentum. So a large fraction of this 450 GB goes to the momentum of the produced particle. For new particle production we have 29 GB. Now how can I calculate 29 GB? Well, the basic thing is that we go to the center of mass frame. You know the definition, what is the center of mass frame? When the total momentum is zero. Therefore, you have to convert this system's energy and boost them to the center of mass frame. And in the center of mass frame, since the initial momentum is zero, you can produce particles with <coughs> zero momentum. So, you don't waste energy. And Computation says that for this proton-proton system as shown, that is only 29.5. 
229. That is if you are interested in producing a single particle, you have the possibility of producing a 29 GeV particle. Now, of course, energy costs money, right? You cannot energize particles without spending tremendous amount of money. Therefore, one would like some kind of economy. And what is that? Why don't you make the lab frame equal to the center of mass frame? That is, you have two beams moving with equal and opposite momentum. This is what you see in the actual experiment, that is the lab frame. And there automatically the initial momentum is zero. Therefore, this whole, this is <coughs> 450 or 450. This 900 GV is entirely available for producing and here you are getting a reaction which is worth your money. You are getting results which justifies you. So this is called a colliding beam experiment as opposed to the fixed target experiment. And our talk will be essentially on this colliding beam experiment. Now, I will avoid mathematics as much as possible, but I have to do a little bit here and there. So, it is better to know some basic uh, definitions and here it is. Now, here I have a variable S. Now, I have to go to the blackboard. Can we turn on this light? Yes.
center of mass frame, lab frame is the same as the center of mass frame. And therefore, this guy is twice the beam energy, energy of each beam, Ea equal to Eb. And so it is, and the square root is, so it is directly proportional to the energy. So you have a 100 GeV beam, you can produce 100 GeV particle, as simple as that. So therefore, this is cost effective, it is worth your money. And hence, we have preferred to, there are problems with the colliding beam also, but let us not go into that details. At least from the first principle, it seems that it is cost effective. So, this is how we produce particles using colliding beams and we prefer the colliding beam. But there is a point that didn't I tell you that particle, whichever particle is produced, our interest is in highly unstable particles, right? So what we do, if it is highly unstable, we must have a detecting system which can produce this. No detecting system can ever produce, ever detect anything which leaves for 10 to the minus 24 or 25 seconds, impossible. So what you have to do is you have to allow them to decay into stable particles and this is where the particle det detectors come in. In fact, it is a good thing that we have huge all around these parties here. So I am not best expert to talk about modern particle detectors, but we have other experts like him, Professor Pati, Naik. Uh, Professor Naik. So if you are interested in a discussion session, we can talk for a while about particle detectors. But the main point is we have to allow the unstable particles to decay into stable particles. So the message is in order to
different kind of magnetic systems. These two beams are made to collide at four or yes, four designated points, and there they collide, and following Einstein's principle, produce particles. Old and if they are sufficiently energetic, can produce new heavy particles as well. I will just draw your attention to these two points. It is not that the others are not important. The reason I am drawing your attention to these points is that these are called detectors. CMS is a particle detector, maybe much more than the size of this whole building in fact. And Alice is another detector but not for new particle search basically. It is another very interesting subject, heavy air pollution, but that is not the topic of our discussion today. The reason I focus to this is CMS is the experiment where Indian physicists participate. From many Indian institutes, in particular, two institutes in Bhuvaneshwar participates in the CMS experiment, which is NISAR and IOP. And Professor Nayak is directly participant of this experiment and there are professors in NISA who are also participating in this experiment. So these two are our particular interests. It is not that the others are not doing good physics, all of them are doing good physics, but naturally we will have we will have some partiality towards the experiment in which uh, physicists from India participate. <laughs> So this LHC as you know has been operating for a long time and a question will come that why this, why did we make it? Well as you can guess or you have already heard in DP's talk that they wanted to discover the Higgs boson. That was the number one goal of the LHC experiment. The Higgs boson was not known before. I mean not discovered, it was known, very much known, its indirect properties, from indirect properties one could even guess its mass. I am not going into all, at least the mass range, I am not going into all those details. But it was Alex's task to produce that particular boson through PP collision and identify this to be the Higgs boson. Now, with this, let me first go to the picture which shows the discovery of the Higgs. Now before that I have to write down two lines of relativistic kinematics that is when a particle decays, be it Higgs, be it whatever, whenever a particle decays into two unstable particles, decays into two particles. square of the four momentum of the mother particle which is obviously equal to and this is equal to the mass square of the mother particle. Now this means that this square which is actually this square which is actually detected by their electromagnetic 